Alrighty, good afternoon, uh, YouTube, um, hold on, okay, hi Gene Zero here, uh, well I did the jumble up again, back with another quick movie review, uh, this is one of my favorites, um, this is Wanted, uh, starring Morgan Freeman and, um, Angelina Jolie, James McAvoy, Common, um, and, uh, what's that boy's name, Chris Pratt, uh, this is a very interesting movie, you know, looking this up. Um, it's actually, well, I'm going to start off by saying it's based off of a comic book uh, created by Scottish um, uh, writer and I think an artist, too, by the name of Mark Miller. And Mark Miller has done um, projects such as uh, Superman, Red Sun, uh, This, and Kingsman, um, the Secret, Secret Service. And it's probably another book um, I'm leaving out. Oh, Kick-Ass, he did that, too. Um this is a very interesting movie. This is the first one I've seen, you know, James McAvoy's performance in. And, um, you know, it, it pretty much really got him on the launching point of, you know, him being an X-Men and now him being in more prevalent movies. Um, the cool thing behind the scenes, they actually wanted, like, someone who really wasn't, not really good looking, but, you know, just an average guy that we can put in a, in a very extreme, you know, situation, but, you know, like I said, the comic and the movie, of course, uh, you look it up on the internet, it says it's loosely based, and by loose, I mean, it's really loose, like, once it only had six issues, and I think the movie's most likely, uh, only adapted, like, the first two, um, and, you know, a lot of the things are, are, you know, uh, the same in the beginning, but, you know, they really stray apart by the time the second act happens. Uh, they made it more realistic. So in the comic book, it's pretty much, you know, um, secret, you know, it, it's in, in superhero lore, but it's more in the villain's favor. And um, the quote, the creator is kind of like with Spider-Man, you know, that great power comes with great responsibility. But, you know. In this world, it's more of, you know, great power comes you, you can do whatever you want and nobody can stop you. So uh, he said um, he got this idea from what his uh, brother used to tell him, you know, as a kid making up stories. You know, he actually said that superheroes did exist. And of course, he was a kid and he was gullible, especially uh, seeing the, the George Reeves Superman, you know, uh, uh, show, uh, show, and I kind of was fooled that way too, you know, a little bit until I realized, you know, they make movies and all that, and the people behind the scenes. I think when I, uh, the first one for me was, uh, was Christopher Reeve, and of course, Tim Burton's Batman, and then of course, I didn't figure it out, um, until I saw Spider Man, I believe, and I saw behind all the behind the scenes stuff, so I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> it's just. just people and doing movies and all that and when I fully grasped you know you know what was real versus what was fake um uh pretty much um in addition I really wish they did a sequel to this because the world building really was very very interesting um of course one of the main selling points of this movie you know uh is curving bullets and myth busters that tested it you really can't do it even they said even if you had superhuman you know um strong arm power uh yeah you you, you really can't do it uh they'll still go straight and you know um how can i say it uh dead shot from uh, the dc universe his portrayal of so-called curving bullets was more realistic even though he didn't they were just ricocheting and, and he knew that you the trajectory where the bullets were going to go kind of like with Captain America's shield. But, um, within this movie, it was more about, um, it's really not much of a big heavy philosophy. It's pretty much saying if you're getting shitted on, it, it's really a time and a place, you know, in your life to, to you know, to grow a pair and, and to say, fuck that. I'm tired of people pushing over on me. And again, it's a time and a place, but it sucks now because, some people over, you know, blow it out of proportion or, you know, um, someone approaches to you and you may be confrontational, but they're not in that way. They're just pretty much trying to tell you something. And I've been in positions like that before, even at work. You know, uh, I used to work at a bagel shop and one of the ladies that had trained me, she was a little bit bipolar. So when uh, 
they were asked, do you have such and such bagel? I sat there and I thought about it because even I've been in that position before to ask the baker. And I was really thinking, I really don't care if you don't have it or not. You know, just tell me yes or no so I can tell, you know, um, the, the customer when they ask. Because uh, it was very funny. She had a certain perspective. And when I seen it with, with one of my coworkers, they had a certain perspective. But when I was working one day being in the in the coworker's shoes, he was like, you know what? I really think they really don't give a shit, <laughs> you know. And it's just funny because uh, this movie had a lot of humor, you know, um, with the kid main character having an anxiety attack, but it really wasn't, it was, it was just adrenaline and it was pretty much his superpower, you know, to move and act in a certain way. And they even say that realistically, I know, um, some soldiers and some cops saying when they first get in the field in the combat zone and people are shooting at them, some people say, or movies usually say time slows down, but you know, some movies have gotten much more accurate. I know on The Walking Dead, Shane has said, nah, that's a bunch of bullshit. Everything speeds up, you know, the adrenaline. Yeah, to a certain moment, you may slow down, but when your comrades may say, man, you drew so fast, it was it was unbelievable. And it was kind of like um, the Matrix, you know, in the code where Neo was doing the the the, the bullet dodge. And you can say that in, in, a, in a way it was adrenaline, but it was in code and he knew how to break it. But yeah, it wasn't fast enough, you know. Um, but uh, as stated before, it would have been dope to see like the Matrix equilibrium in this movie with their concepts and action wrapped up into one. You know that that'll be a, a mind blown. Um, but uh, the actors had really did a good job in this movie. Um, I can't remember the actor's name that played uh, Wesley's dad. You know, spoil spoiler alert in the story that he ends up killing accidentally because you know one of the twists was that they tried to lure him uh the, the fraternity had tried to lure him into killing um the so-called killer that killed his dad and even if you watch the beginning of the movie even it fools the audience and then come to find out you know they they were playing him the entire time because you know he was the one person that you know uh the main character of wesley that he would you know that that his dad wouldn't kill but um you know, uh, yeah, the actor that plays his dad, he he's a really good actor. Um, this is the like one of my favorite roles with him in there. I can't remember his name, but of course I'm gonna tag him in there. And um, I already watched a few movies with him in there. If you saw my Total Recall um review, uh, he was in 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 that um TV movie, and he was in Resident Evil uh, Apocalypse. He was that that doctor that was um he was like the main bad guy. You know, he wasn't Wesker, but uh, he played that main bad guy. That was um, the main scientist umbrella dude. And um, he's in the MCU, too. He, he plays Baron uh, Von Strucker. Um, I think his first name is Thomas something. I, I want to say his, his name, is, of course, is European. But, um, yeah, did this... Like I said, I I enjoyed this film when it first came out. Um, there's a video game attached to it, which is based off of the the, the movie, and it really answers a lot of the, the the void in questions. Like you learn about Wesley's mom, you know. Um, it tells an inner story of what happened, of why the fraternity is trying to, you know, you know, kill Wesley. Well, not really kill Wesley, but pursue him slash eventually kill in the game. Excuse me, as well as kill Cross, but of course Cross found out what Morgan Freeman's character was doing, and um, all that had went on a flip. Um, another additional thing, uh, I, with the current, you know, as of right now, the the comic book story that I'm doing, this was one of the films that was like an inspiration. Uh, I think mainly with the story beats, you know, recruiting him. Um, I think I put that in the origin story with my main character. Um, except it takes place in a, in a different place, and it's a whole, you know, of course, it's, it's an origin story, so it was a lot more building blocks on that. Um, and uh, I think even Morgan Freeman's character in this um, was slightly inspiration for the villain I created, even though it's a mixture of Idris Elba's acting and, you know, um, other roles that he's done. And... Uh, like I said, I really wish they had more in this film. Um, technically, uh, John Wick is now like 
one of the new assassin stories and even their concepts I got inspired by, um, you know, and it just would have been dope to see this really, it would be interesting if someone had, you know, well, it's going to kind of be me take, uh, the John Wick concepts and the wanton one, put it into one because, you know, like the fraternity and, and the continental, they have rules and regulations, but we didn't explore all those rules with, um, the fraternity in this, um, and even in the comic book, I believe, uh, it was, I don't think they were called the fraternity. Like I said, it was more like, just imagine if the Avengers were really, really bad guys, you know, in, in the world of wants, they were even going to different dimensions. They were, there, some of them were even raping people, you know, they were really, you, you know, bad dudes, you know, one character was down, had down syndrome. One of them is a pile of shit. It was just, it was all kind of craziness, and I actually read the book. I have it behind me on my shelf. Um, pretty much the last fact I'm going to say, really, with the comic book, um, the cool thing, both the character of Fox and um, Wesley. Uh, Wesley was modeled after Eminem, and Fox was modeled after Har Halle Berry. And if you look at him, it, especially with Wesley, it does look like Eminem. It would have been kind of funny if they did cast him in this, because the movie... Is shot in Chicago, but I heard that Eminem doesn't like to leave the states or Detroit in particular. But um, you know, after I heard about that, I looked at it again. I was like, yeah, I can see it. And you know, that on, uh, and on top of you know, very good video games and even um, Negan's character from The Walking Dead had inspired me to really model some of my characters after actors. But of course, you have to be careful because people love the sue and shit. So. We'll see, you know, some of the stuff I got now, I'm going to redraw for the final graphic novel. So they'll look like, you know, someone could say, oh, it looks like such and such. I was like, yeah, because I modeled them after that. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, you know, I'll see you guys in the next uh, review. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will talk to all you guys later. Sayonara.